After working on a seven-part series on spiritual abuse, I've gained a wealth of knowledge and a new perspective. But most of all, it's caused me to clearly see how silence is complicity. Thus, my silence, though serving me, has not served the masses. So as the universe wills, I am presented an opportunity to come clean. Let me start by apologizing to all that have been affected by what I'm about to address, but suffered long because of my silence. I must also seize the moment to offer my apologies to one person in particular, Elisa Dunn. I know what it is to play a part in a network where victims were created. And to be honest with you, I didn't say anything at all. And it's one of my biggest regrets. It's the reason why I'm really doing this video. Specifically, there are two people that I carry in my heart because I should have spoke up and I didn't. And though I think it's too late to stir the waters now, I want to say to you two specifically, I am so sorry. It will be self-explanatory by the end of this episode why I needed to apologize to Lisa. And by the way, hi, my name is Vincent Terrell Hill. Some call me Buddha. Some call me V. Terrell Hill. And for some of you, you call me Elder Vincent Terrell Hill. I work with Larry Reed from Larry Reed Live from 2003 to 2018. In that time, I was everything from a personal assistant, executive assistant. I traveled statewide and internationally. But most importantly, I am the creator and originator of the Larry Reed Live Show. Throughout those 15 years, 13 years were spent in a sexual relationship with Larry Reed. For a while, I believed I was the only one, or rather, the only man. However, Larry made me aware after our sexual relationship was over, I wasn't. I will disclose the other men in the church he's had some sort of sexual relationship with outside of me as we move forward. Most of what I say in this video is provable. Everything else I saw with my own eyes are those directly connected to it told me. None of this is secondhand information. You did take my comment on having the ears in your ass. So it's my students in you. Yes. While he was married, pastoring, traveling the road, working with me on Larry Reed Live, we maintained an ongoing sexual relationship. That, to my knowledge, only he, Shamako Bryant, and myself was aware of from 2005 to approximately 2017 when I cut off the sexual relationship. Shamako didn't like our relationship. I remember you love both of us, but which one decided him to didn't like our relationship? More on Shamako later. Now you may ask, where did I get these audio clips from? Late night on January the 15th, 2023, Larry drove to my house to have a conversation with me months after him and I stopped communicating because he halted payment on an arrangement agreed upon for years of work I did during my 13 years of service with Larry, the Breakthrough Church, Breakthrough Temple, and all of the iterations thereof, including Larry Live. If you remember January the 15th, 2023, you may also remember Levantre Andrews. He was being interviewed by Tasha Kay, premiering in parts on YouTube, but in full on her website that same night. That night, he texted me out of nowhere wanting to talk and saying he will pay me my money that he owes me. Now, one might feel it was hush money. However, he attributed his desire to talk to a dream he had, and he felt led to text me and to meet with me. Now, speaking of Levantre Andrews, let's go ahead and air this out real quick. If honest, Levantre and Larry would corroborate this one thing. I had no idea Levantre had accused Larry of molesting him two years later. 
To this day, I haven't received a clear answer from Larry or anyone in Larry's camp why no one told me when I was literally the guy that handled all of the, or most of the fires, rather, in the church. When Larry finally told me what happened around 2017 or something like that, 16 or 17, approximately 16 or 17, it was a very super generic story that I believed Levantre was lying because I remember Levantre being a lying teenager in the church. So I just chucked it off and went on about my business. After leaving the Larry Live community in 2018, Someone prompted me, you need to go speak to Levantre. He feels like you helped Larry cover up his story. And I said, huh? So I reached out to Levantre just simply to let him know I didn't find out till many years later. Only to realize that phone call brought me more than what I bargained for. Once Levantre gave me his side of the story, significant parts of it startled me because it mirrored the same sexual experiences I had with Larry Reed. See, Larry is a voyeur. He loves to see people naked. Delquan recounts a time that Larry uh, purchased him new underwear and wanted to see him in the underwear. Levantre recounted a time where Larry asked him to clean up his room in his underwear. What Levantre didn't know up until now, and he still doesn't know he's hearing this while you're hearing this, I knew he was telling the truth the whole time. Because I too was requested by Larry to do the exact same thing many a times. Although I wasn't there, I said to Larry, as it relates to Levantre, here's what I said to Larry, either you did something to Levantre, or you provided the inappropriate details of your bedroom fetishes to a young member in the church. Either way, you are dirty, dog, wrong. One of the things that always bothers me about his LeBron trade is one thing and one thing only. When I talked to him back in 17, 18, he said something um, that was eerily similar to our experience. And I asked you about it and you said that you told him some stuff and yada yada yada. So in my mind, uh, even if that was just that, there was already a line crossed. Do you think maybe you can just let, let him have this and just let him filter out, fill it out? So interesting to see. Then what we're talking about in the park. And um, um, Marco said, he said, I, he said, I know you, y'all are going to be talking about other stuff. He said, but you need to ask me some of what he thinks. He said, and stuff like this makes him good at what, what to do. But I don't think that would bode well in court because that admission could be seen as, well, if he was having an improper relationship with the assistant, why, why couldn't he have an improper relationship with the young, with the drama? So it's, that's, that's a lot. It shouldn't have happened. And I told Larry explicitly, leave that boy alone. Now let me go deeper. No abuser operates alone, right? He or she always has a network of people to help them be who and how they are, which is a monster. No abuser operates alone. There is always a network of people aiding and hiding their secrets and abetting in their schemes and dirty work. If you know you are or were a part of such a network, get out while you can. Shamak O'Brien, though he appears nice, is not innocent. In my opinion, you know what's worse than someone who stabs you in the back? That same person who hides the knife and helps you clean the wound. Shamako and Larry were boyfriends before I even got in the picture in 2003. And in my opinion, still maintain some sort of romantic understanding or committed relationship. For those who were around in the church days, 
Mako moved out, and right after he moved out to his own apartment, I moved in to Larry's house. Mako did not like the fact that I was there because he knew Larry would eventually not keep his hands to himself, and he couldn't do anything about it. So guess who had to pay for it because he could not control Larry? I did. Shamako found out about Larry and I when I told him in 2005 doing a ride back from Raleigh to Fedville, and here is how it happened. Prior to that, Mako and I, wanting to see each other naked, met at the then church musician's house, Antoine Shepard, while he was out of town. Mako, for whatever reason, had a key to Antoine's house, so we went there, stripped naked. We were young and dumb, giddy and childish, but hey, we did it. I thought it was a good time. We didn't touch each other at the time. We just saw each other naked. However, what I thought was Mako being fun and my friend in reality was him fishing for information on whether or not Larry and I was having sex. He was willing to do anything to find out. And of course, I told it because at the time I didn't know any better. Mako as late as 2021 is still the same way, sneaky and sexually deviant. Yes, we flirted. We, I'm not, I'm not a superstar in this. He fondled me all the time, playing around, touching me in areas he shouldn't touch me. We've exchanged nudes. The Thursday before the Reformation experience in 2021, Mako masturbated in front of me on FaceTime whilst I watched. He asked me of my thoughts of a foursome between Larry, Kendall, Locklear, and myself. He said it was a fantasy of his. Well, I guess that's a five somehow, or quadruplet or whatever. It's five. He even admitted by being caught by Nathan Locklear's now incarcerated son, Day Day, at a meetup, a gay meetup spot off of Cheshire Bridge Road. Is Mako sweeter acting, portraying way more innocent in comparison to Larry Reed? Yes. But is he worse than Larry Reed, if you ask me? Absolutely. Now, I need to stop to say sorry to Latrice and Lisa. While at this time, you both were being dogged by your ex-husbands for what y'all did or were doing. They did it first and literally continued to do it right up under your noses. And he was going in like, only thing we got in common is this X, Y, Z and this, right, this. And I'm like, what is you talking about? That's not a good look. And yeah, the way you was, try to say, I'm the queen of the family, that, that was degrading. It was disrespectful. The reality is that I don't, their timeline makes no sense to me. Um, when they say the relationship started and issues with Marco and Latrice's relationship, it's very strange. Um, because in my opinion, before we moved from North Carolina, this may not be true. But in my mind, they were already in a relationship under Marco's notes. So in my mind, I feel like they're not truthful, but they could be telling their truth. But from the outside looking in, it looks like you're grown enough to look back and see when this relationship started. Now, what you're telling us sounds good, but the reality is there was a connection, something drawn between y'all before then because she was spending a lot of time over there. And even from a professional standpoint, Felicia brought a broken relationship with her daughters to our church to be fixed. And Latrice was supposedly one of the kids. That's why her and Felicia was connected. But when I began to notice something else going on, I told Latrice and Shamako in North Carolina a long time ago, I said, keep them at your house. I said, because there's something with lesbian doesn't connect to them. And I even put Felicia under that same, for lack of a better word, spirit, you know, because that's how I was communicating then. It was, all, it was you and another woman while you married. That should have never been. But it was, and that's okay. So when they tell this story like it's squeaky clean, I don't know who y'all want to believe that. I don't believe it. Let's talk about Kendall. Kendall is the same, complicit and just as sexual promiscuous, allegedly. I've seen, uh, Kendall, I've seen you with my own eyes nude. You sent a nude to Mako. Mako showed it to me. It was a side profile of you with your back arched 
and you're on all fours on your bed looking at the camera. I saw it. You know you took it. You didn't send it to me. How did Mako get it? Right. According to Mako, Kendall was caught sending his nudes all over Miami. When caught, Larry wouldn't fire him, according to what Mako told me, because Kendall knew too much. It was a liability to keep him and a liability to fire him. I told you this network is dirty, dark, and deviant. Nathan Locklear, I want to apologize for what I'm going to say next, but your business has been broadcasted to Mako, Kendall, and myself by, I guess at the time it was Apostle Reed, maybe it was Larry. He shared how you were the best dick sucker he's ever had or experienced. He also went as far as to share your uh Nudes with us. They were still shots of a video. I guess you were in front of Larry naked on FaceTime where, well, Larry was recording and sent us the still shots. Now, those of you that are viewers, you may not recognize this, what I'm going to show you, but Nathan knows his body and I'm sure Crystal does too. Prophet Philip McFeeders, pastor of Life Changers World Worship Center, located in Louisville, Kentucky. According to Larry, Philip and him are also sexually active and emotionally entangled. Are you seeing this pattern? Why do I have a video of Prophet McFeeders drunk, stripping naked, while entering a hotel room in Miami? Take a wild guess how I would get that video. Here. <laughs> Go ahead, how many do you get in the bed? <laughs> Go ahead, get in the bed. I'm getting in the bed. Okay. I'm about to go get in the bed. I text me in the morning, you wake up. <laughs> All right, love me too. <laughs> I thought you had to pee. I'm gonna pee when I get home. Okay. okay. <laughs> Now, honestly and sincerely, I would like to apologize to Philip and Nathan for them falling casualties in this messy web. But if I left them out of the extremes, the point of this video would be for not. I could go on and on. Junior, the bodybuilder, the, I guess, security, the masseuse, another sexual partner of Larry, According to what Larry told me this past April, April 2023, everyone in this picture are the ones I've just named. So if you want to know who is Larry having sex with or some kind of sexual immoral, immoral relationship with, look at those in his inner circle. Hmm. You, have, you ever wondered why Josh Merrill's or Cameron Phillips are never invited on these trips, and if they're invited, they never seem to go? Huh. Same for back in the church days. It was men, it was the men right up under him. Not every man, but those who was close to him. Larry had inappropriate dealings with. I will name the full list later in the video. But Lisa, you remember when you stole the phone? You were texting the wrong men. Lisa, if you would have texted me what you text those other men, I would have responded. Lisa, you were right the whole time. Every time you were being gaslit for trying to break into his computer because you knew he was doing something wrong. It was Mako. It was Kendall. I was there. I saw it. He was doing it with me. He called you crazy. He talked about you. To this day, I've heard you make demeaning jokes about the time you lost your mind because you just knew he was cheating and you were never wrong. And I watched complicit as he made you look like a fool. And again, I say to you, I am so sorry. I am so, so sorry. Hmm. All right.
right, let's keep going. It hurts my heart to know so many people so into the MBN Network Weekly only for the leaders of this organization are the head leader to splurge, wasting money, and from what I have heard, promise much to the members or the patrons, yet drop the ball, underperform, or never fulfill the said projects or promises. One example of wasted funds, you might have heard of a recent story of this guy, this former staff member called Lester Peltier, as it relates to all the rumors that be going on in folk mind, just be made up in their mind. I am single and I can do what the hell I want to do. But that ain't happening. Larry Darnell Reed. Mm-mm. No, that's no, 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 no. I wish I would be fooling up with a mentally ill, I'm talking about a lover of somebody that's mentally ill poor, not American citizen. I, I just can't say what y'all think. Who y'all think I am? I, I don't understand that. Do you see my ex-wife? Do you see the, the, I know there are beautiful women around me and beautiful men around me. Y'all see that? So then why am I going to go out and do that? Y'all just need to think just a little bit. I'm not having no, no lover that you had a fine in every way, shape, come on now. And I'm not taking care of you. That's not happening. Let me explain. Whoever I'm going to be with, I'm going to take care of them. But you need to be able to take care of your darn self if I was not in the picture what I'm saying. No, it's crazy. That is the dumbest thing in the world. He was put on staff to be a chef for the NBN Network. Wallace, there was already a chef on staff, Latrice. Lester is now alleging that outside of the contract, which included housing, transportation, and a regular payroll, he was getting way more from Larry. This Lester story is not adding up, even when you hear it from Larry's mouth. Eventually, we end up, I was paying for some stay places, but like, good money was tight. So I said, I can kill for that. You had to come to Atlanta. Right. So he came to Atlanta for this thing. We should do it because they got the contract for marriage. And he was always into something. So it was time for Thanksgiving or Christmas. And Marco didn't want him gone while right? he always had one of old people there. Mm-hmm. And he left, he went to his aunt house and took his stuff. But while he was there, just considering all the different stuff that was going on, Marco said, let's send the rest of his stuff there. You know, like, let's see if we can stay a little bit longer until we can just clear our mind and find out what we're going to do. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Well, he started thinking, these people are trying to get rid of me. Mm-hmm. So he's in New York. I feel like we're trying to get rid of him. He flew back to Miami, but he ended up homeless because he had no money. Mm-hmm. And he got frostbitten bit and had to go to the hospital. So he gets mad. And guess who he called? Hmm. This shit. Oh, Jesus. Huh? Let me check this out. So when I hear him saying this on the phone, I'm like, I mean, let's see what happened. Let me get to the phone call. So he calls Mr. Whitehead. Now, we don't know any stuff that's going on. Come find out Mr. Whitehead was going to pay him $20,000 up front, $20,000 in the end. Flew him back to New York, put him in a hotel room for three days. He's going to meet him at 8 o'clock. He called us at 6. All of us had blocked me. By this time, because we were going to be crazy. Mm-hmm. But he didn't, Michael didn't block him. Mm-hmm. So he called Michael. Mm-hmm. And he said, I'm about to, um, I've got to come to a Bishop Blackhead. We're going to do a story on Reed. And um, y'all push me to marry Latrice. He said all the stuff he needed to say to set up. Uh, like, like, they're trying to get, we're trying to make it a federal thing. Uh, okay. And when Michael said, Well, why are you calling and telling me this? After you call this customer plus, uh-huh. how does one read the call me? You know, I can't believe he did this. I know this is not how he is. What's going on? But see, he, I was, t- I was trying to tell him in November. So I'm like, I said, I'm doing a whole lot. I can't right. do, I can't right. take care of you and do what I can care I got to do. Right. And so, you know me, Michael called me and tell me what's going on. I said, okay, well, let me do that. Michael said, read 
I just want to tell you. I feel like you talked to him this is the kid around me. I said, I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to sit in front of me. I said, don't nobody make, try to make me do something. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm wrong. And I'm about to get off and he said, hum, 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 I said, okay. He called my whole name. And it's like something just clicked. Mm-hmm. He said, listen to me, Larry. No, I mean, me. Call me. So I grabbed the phone and I called him. And as soon as I picked up the phone, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I got something to tell you. He said, what? Lamar, which is his name, both my head. Right. I've been knowing him since 2019. He paid me to get close to you and get inside your business to find out who you are. So this had to let that whole thing go because he didn't go through it. You know, so he apologized. I miss you here so much to stay close back my five Orlando. So I had um, Larry Lap had some Mercedes in the apartment in in the book here. Now, why would you take care of someone whom you thought was betraying you? Up until April 2023, Larry and Lester were cool because I have the text messages where he was trying to recommend masseuses and Lester was one of the ones he was recommending. He was staying in the apartment financed by your seed sowing. Those of you that are part of Reformation Church. Doing what up until June before he was attempted to be kicked out? If you listen to Lester's story, there was no bad blood up until June of last year. The recording is in January of last year. So for six months, he was receiving money, something. If anything, lodging on you all's dime. And if patterns don't lie, Larry, your sexual involvement makes sense why you would have your cousin Latrice marry him. Because according to Mako, he never wanted to marry Latrice. But guess who pushed it and darn near made him do it? You did. You've used Latrice twice to lock your boyfriends in. And that's not nice. I asked Latrice, will she be interested in a contract of marriage? Yeah. Da, da, da. She was like, okay, she made him, she liked him anyway. She said, okay, fine. You know, of course, she was never trying to have sex with him. Right. But it was just to have a friendship. Mm-hmm. Him and Josh did him under the... Allegedly, the NBN Network accountant or ex-accountant was stealing money, hard-earned prophetic seeds, patrons sold at the word of their prophet, Larry Reed. The accountant's name, the, the ex or former accountant's name is Eddie Banks. He was able to steal, according to what Larry told me, uh, $6,000 at a time. Now, Eddie, I'm not accusing you of doing it. you got to go ask Larry why he would call and tell me that. All the trips that you've seen me on, I never paid a dime. Not a hotel room, not a meal, not a plane ticket. Thank you, sowers of the NBN Network. Every car they drive, the jewelry, clothes, and the houses of not just Larry, but partially the entire leadership is off of the back of the NBN church members, the patrons, the LRL platform supporters. And let me tell you, there's not one house owned. No one's paying mortgage. Your seeds are being poured into rent. A 
two houses in Atlanta, one house in Charlotte, one house in, at one time, two houses in Miami, one house in LA over, it was, it was around about, I don't know the exact number, but I guarantee you it was near $60,000 a month at one time that your seed sowing was paying into rent for one man and his team. No one generates a real penny. No one is a true entrepreneur. No one is making a significant amount of money are living outside of the MBN network. It is all off of you. It's not even the YouTube views. They're not that high for him to be around so long. It's all off of you in the Reformation Church and in Patreon. We were watching a video, uh, the producer and I was watching a video yesterday and one woman sold into Larry and she said, Larry, I sent you all I got and my heart almost broke. Because these people believe in you and you are literally raising dark, deviant hell behind the scenes. And I know there are some that's going to keep on supporting you. But I'm just trying to just trying to help somebody not make a mockery or fool out of themselves any longer. Now, this doesn't include Cameron and Erica Phillips or Josh Merrills or Felicia and mostly Nathan Locklear. Okay. These people are fairly smart and could leave the NBN network right now and live a healthy, profitable lifestyle. Everyone else needs your tithe in your offering or they wouldn't be able to sustain the life you're trying to sow to get. I have heard more than enough stories of people going broke being unhoused and utterly depressed because Larry teaches a type of gospel that subtly demands you give or sow at the powerless word of the prophet with no significant manifestation, which is then attributed to the era of the sower. And, and for what I understand, the response is if you're not, Receiving blessings from your seed, there must be financial sin in your life. Well, can you guess what the solution is to the financial seed sin? So again, so you see the cycle. I sow, nothing happens. I feel like I'm sinning. So I sow, nothing happens. I feel like I'm sinning. So I sow, nothing happens. In the meantime, while you're going in that loop, they're in Aruba and Miami and here, excuse me, we were in LA. We we're eating the best steaks off of that loop. I stayed in five-star hotels off of that loop. Some of this camera equipment I purchased off of that loop. I'm, I'm not a hero here. I'm a whistleblower. In my conclusion, I am a gay man. I've had my share of gay sexual experiences more than I would have liked to have. I have done everything that come to my mind outside of hard drugs. My nose, my allergies, and sinuses will not allow me to do that. That being said, these men I named participating in gay sex, gay sex is not the issue. Outside of Levantre, these are grown men. The issue is the lies, deceit, and hypocrisy as they talk about others while doing the same thing themselves. It's Larry dragging Lisa all these years on her mothering and leaving him for a woman when he never even fathered his kids. Kendall, Larry, Latrice, and Mako, and myself did. And you didn't have to leave her for a man. You kept the men in your house the whole time. It was Larry treating Latrice like she was a dirty dog and dragging Deja McBride's name in the mud for, uh, because Latrice was dating Deja, a younger member in the church, while having imp at least, the very least, an improper communication with Levantre Andrews. Also, at the same time, having sexual dealings with Shamak O'Brien, Kendall Peacock, Nathan Locklear, Diamario Hines, and myself, Vincent Terrell Hill. 
Now, I want to say sorry, dear Mario Hines. I wasn't going to put your name in this because as far as I know, you don't deal with Larry anymore or that crew. However, your name was publicly put out by Del Quan, and I happened to hear the interview this morning. So I might as well confirm what Del Quan was saying. Larry told me himself that one day you came over the house, you laid on the floor, poked your booty out, and Larry dry humped you. And y'all did some other things, maybe some petting or something like that. That's what Larry told me. If it's a lie, go to Larry. If it's the truth, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> the point is, this man is a dark, deviant, evil narcissist. In all of these cases, you all's names are dragged in it because he never cared about any of us in the first place. He is sick. These people that have accused him might be liars. They might not pay their bills. They might have issues. They might not be of character. But for the interviews that I saw or heard, none of those people have characterized Larry Reed wrongly. Just because, Larry, you can assassinate characters don't mean that your character is clean. Just because somebody don't pay their bills or they owe somebody money don't mean they're lying on you. Everybody is not lying on you. It's the fact that you act as if you've only tried peeing. You would. You would do it if you wanted to do it. These kind of soft launches so you can come back to your audience and say, oh, well, I told y'all. No, 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 no. Tell the truth. You kept a vert. 15 year sexual relationship with me. You enjoyed it. You wanted it. And when I didn't want to give it to you, you demanded it. You like men more than you like women. Stop playing with these people. It's the fact that you have done stories on Brian Karn, E. Dewey Smith, Matthew Stevenson, Jamal Bryant. James Hall, I got to eat that one too. Some of these people we did stories together on. Daryl Walls and countless others while you are way more sinister and dark and deviant and ugly on the inside than they will ever be. This whole idea of the platform being about women and kids how is that when the woman in your life you've mistreated ever since I've known you and her? And those kids you deal with when you want to deal with them. You all have been lied to. Oh, how can I forget T.D. Jakes? For peace sakes. Manasseh Jordan, if you are truly, truly trying to wave a banner of integrity or truth, discard your partnership with Larry Reed immediately or everyone that watches this, mark him as a false prophet shearing the sheep for gain. If T.D. Jakes is truly guilty, he won't be brought down by the hands of thieves and darkness cosplaying as truth and light. It's not how that works. Bishop Bernard Jordan, if you are as integral and truly a prophet as you say you are, you know I'm telling the truth. You know it. We're Geminis. You know we don't, you know how we roll. Talk some sense into Larry. Sir, if you don't, everyone Watching this, deem him a false prophet that would rather conveniently receive the seeds off of the back of the poor than to stand up for innocent people who's been trampled over by a dark, deviant psychopath. Do what's right, Bernard Jordan. 
You know, I know you know it. I know you see it. I see that you see it. Do what's right. Now, let me speak to content creators because everybody getting this. I don't have no friends. Well, I got friends. But in context of this, I'm equal opportunist. I sat back and watched you all cover Larry's stories and make mockery of it. You sensationalized the abuse of others for clicks and views. You interviewed people who were not credible. You were so excited to tell the story. The real truth was lost amongst hours and hours of pointless banter. Lots of shade and other nonsense in your YouTube and Facebook lives. You're wasting time. Stop manipulating the stories of manipulators to grow your channel. If you all would have simply done what I did today, just plainly just tell the story, it would not have been necessary for me to come out of retirement and do what I'm doing right now. To those who are watching, I got something to say to you too. God is tired of the lies. He's sick of the nonsense. Exposure is here. Leave other people's houses alone and get your house in order. Now, I know the majority of you came over here to be nosy. Hi, my name is Vitoril Hill, a soul healer. Welcome to Safe Space. But now that you're here, you are now accountable and responsible for your part in this. Every time you see a video, you like a video, you share a video, you comment on a psychopath's channel, you are complicit to the blood that's on his hands. If I'm telling the truth, if Levantre is telling the truth, poor you, you're paying for it, you're going to pay for it. All right, here's what I'm going to do moving forward. I'm going to do one question and answer live when I feel like it. Then I'm going to choose one integral, one integral, integral platform and one interview only. And after that, I'm going back to soul healing and helping people that want to be helped. God bless. Peace. Bye.